Welcome everyone to another episode of Parenting in the Far North. I'm your host, Ariane Aaron Bureau. So today's guest is Jessie Zimmerly, a 34-year-old small business owner. She and her mom owned Sheep Creek Lodge in Willow, Alaska. Uh, Jessie has a 13-month-old son and an almost nine-year-old stepson. And as any parent will tell you, raising kiddos looks different for everyone. And she's here to talk about how she's learned to navigate parenthood and all that comes with it. So please welcome to the podcast, Jesse Zimmerly. Jesse, thanks for being here and welcome. Thanks for having me. This is a topic you can talk about for hours and hours. Right? I am telling you. <laughs> well, before we get into all of our topics, what we want to discuss today, um, tell our listeners a little bit about you. Are you born and raised here in Alaska? Give me a little bit of background. I was born in Washington, um, but I'm Alaskan through and through. We yeah. moved here when I was five. Um, my brother and I have one older brother, and um, we were raised in Anchorage. And then 10 years ago, we moved out to Willow. Um, just above to uh, run Sheep Creek Lodge. And so this is our 10-year mark in October. Congratulations. A, a decade. Yeah, I was 25 when we got the lodge, and now I'm in my 30s and can't believe we made that jump, but really glad that we did. So, How has that been, owning a, lo- a lodge? You know, what's your busy time? I'm assuming, you know, summers like most. It is, but, you know, we have our mushers and we have our snow mm-hmm. machiners, and so we stay open year-round. Uh, it's mayhem. It's been all-encompassing. <laughs> uh, I run it with my mom, so it's a... Uh, a family business that yeah. is another level of fun on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, all right, so you have a 13-month-old. Mm-hmm. Uh, that How is that going right now for you? <sighs> He's a boy. His name is Bo. He is... I love that name, by the way. Thank you. His Bo Fisher is uh, his middle name. Mm-hmm. And so my husband's name is Hunter. And uh, I was like, we're not doing Fisher's <laughs> first name. We're not going to be those people. Hunter and Fisher. Hunter that, and Fisher, that's yes. That's clever, yeah. Yeah, and my stepson is a very similar name as well. And mm-hmm. so um, it, it worked out. He is on the go. He is running. He is at that stage where he can know what he wants but Mm -hmm. doesn't have the verbiage to say it so he screams at us a lot (laughs) Um, so we're dealing with that I wish I had headphones at home all the time because he is um, emotional and just he's delightful he's so fun so becoming a mom, um, what was that like? Is it, is it something completely different from what you thought it would be? How was your pregnancy? It was, it's completely different. And I, I, everybody always says that it's different for mm-hmm. everybody, but you never know until you do it. And yeah. I had a mom, I have a mom that is very honest about it. Um, I also am the first mom in four generations of my family to not have two kids by the time I was 21. So I was 33 when I gave birth. So that's a quote unquote old mom in my family, which <laughs> I couldn't imagine having kids in my twenties. Um, mm-hmm. my pregnancy was great. I work, I work in my kitchen and so I work all over, but I work in my kitchen. So I stayed very physical, very fit. Mm-hmm. I had a great pregnancy. Unfortunately, he decided to be breech and oh. we didn't know until my due date came and I went for the ultrasound. I'm like, Oh, surprise. You have a C-section tomorrow. So I had a surprise C-section, which I healed beautifully, and I was very proud of my body for. And part of that is because I stayed so physical. Wow. We have 13 steps between my kitchen and my prep kitchen all day. How many times are you up that? <clears throat> I, I didn't count. I wore, I wore a Fitbit once to oh. tell me my steps and my stairs, and I took it off. I, like, oh, I can't do this. We can't hold this many numbers. <laughs> <I don't do laughs> yeah. um, you touched on it. You also do have a stepson. Do. Um, was he with you guys prior or after having your son? Um, he's uh, my husband. Um, we've been together three years and married for two. Um, he's had 50-50 custody okay. from before I even um, was in the picture. And so We've had him week on, week off Mm -hmm. um, from the beginning. So what was that like? Did it prepare you a little bit, even though he's, you know, much older? Uh, You know, certainly couldn't prepare you for a newborn, but just mom life. It it definitely did. It was a nice ease in. You know, he does have a mom. She is extremely involved in his life. Obviously, Mm -hmm. they are 50-50, and so I wasn't looking to replace that role. He has one. I'm just a bonus mom. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm his stepmom. I parent um, just as much as my husband does on our time, and so... It prepares you to have the little eyes around you, mm-hmm. you know, and he is so smart, <laughs> so perceptive, <laughs> and it, it definitely had me mind my P's and Q's early, Yes, knowing that my children were going to come <laughs> along as well and have a great big brother to show them the way, mm-hmm. but it, it, you don't know until you're doing it, and being a step-parent, while it is different, it, it'll prepare you because you're responsible for a life. Yeah, I was going to say co-parenting. I, you know, I, we have a blended family, mm. so I get it. Um, yeah. Wow. We have, and it's different for everybody, that it experience is. is. So what was that, what's that experience been like it for is. you? Um, it, it's, it's one of the more difficult aspects of our life for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I also come from a blended family, and so I felt I was more predisposed to it. Um, they have a difficult relationship, but they do make it work for the child. Mm-hmm. Um, 
His mom is also married, so he has a stepfather. So there's a lot of people that love him and a lot of people that want what's best for him. They don't always agree Mm -hmm. on what that means, (laughs) but they're both coming from places of love. And so it can be difficult. Um, I try to keep my husband even, you know, they had a difficult relationship, but they're not in it anymore. And Mm -hmm. it's about, it's about him. He's almost nine. Like it's, let's just carry on now. It's like that age. It's, you know, my daughter's eight going on nine Mm -hmm. and just the growth from like six, seven, eight to nine. It's incredible. It is incredible. He was five when I got him. And that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. I got got you and your dad when you were five. And he was just this squishy little baby. It felt like, and now he's grown up and he's a boy. And he's, he has a lot of those (laughs) and he is not afraid to, to say it. And we like that. We don't ever want to squash that in him. And it's, that's another challenge of parenting is you want that fire in your child, but sometimes I just need you to listen. Yeah. It's really hard to find the in-between. How do you and your husband navigate, you know, with coming from a co-parenting background and family and having to do that, the the discipline? Because I know for some families, you know, that's my kid and you're, you're talking, you know, it's, it can get complicated. It can get very complicated. Part of it is that he and I have a very sturdy relationship. He Mm -hmm. and I come from very different backgrounds. You know, um, I come from a blended relationship. I had, I didn't come from, um, a mom and dad that were together for a long time. His parents are still married and about Mm -hmm. to celebrate their 40th anniversary, but his dad was career military. So he was gone a lot. Yeah. Mom was in charge of three boys. He's the oldest of three. Oh. <laughs> I, she's a saint, honestly. And so yeah. the discipline part comes from him. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to take that part on. Um, we, we look at more consequences versus discipline, hmm. you, taking the heat out of what the yeah. consequences are makes it not discipline. You know, we're not yelling or mad at him, but it's like, Hey, you did this. Mm-hmm. So this is what's going to happen. I'm a little bit more structured. I didn't expect to be the one that was more like, no, we have to have some consequences mm-hmm. um, than he is. He's a little more lax on that. But yeah. I support him in his parenting. And we're the type that we never fight in front of people. We don't fight mm-hmm. in front of our children either. And so if we have a disagreement on what we think should happen, we talk about it. And then we come to the kids and we deal with it that way. Do you find that's helped in raising, you know, your boys? It has. Uh, I mean, they need to see some level of conflict because mm-hmm. that's where they're going to see how you solve conflicts. Right. You, you know, if you hide it from them all, oh, they're not going to see a healthy or an unhealthy way to do it. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times we do talk in front of them. We do discuss issues with them. But we can't let children deal with adult issues. Mm -hmm. And so anything that they don't have control over or that they wouldn't understand, that doesn't need to be spoken in front of them. Anything else we really, we try to work it out because they need to see how adults speak to each other. You're not going to go through your life without conflict. Mm -hmm. And you need, if you're not taught early, you're going to struggle through conflict for a long time. Having a blended family, do you find that your stepson is now kind of maybe asking a little bit more questions of, how are we blended? You know, because our girls were so little that mm-hmm. when we got together, it's kind of what they know. But I've noticed now my eight year old is kind of asked, like, well, why is my dad there? And, you know, not not in a bad way. Right. But having to kind of answer some of those questions. I'm curious, has that noticing differences mm-hmm. between him and right. his friends? Not really. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that this is something that he has understood from a young age. You know, his dad stayed single for a while after mm-hmm. they um, separated. And um, I don't know what it looked like on the other side. But. Not really. Yeah. You know, uh, he just seems to love having the people around him. I come with a very big, big village, having the lodge. Um, we live right next to my mom and her oh, boyfriend. Oh, that's great. Grandma yeah. grandpa are having them right there. Walkable distance. Yeah, um, my folks it, are in Eagle River. I'm like, and they go to Granny and Gramps' house every fun. weekend, which yeah. is wonderful. It is wonderful. <laughs> and that extended family and having a village is yeah. so important. We are blessed to have it. We, are, we work hard to have it. Um, but he doesn't really question that at all um, we, because – Honestly, most of his friends don't have two parents in the mm-hmm. household, which is sad. Yeah. But um, his situation isn't as unique as it used to be, I think. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good to hear. Um, so you also mentioned you were working while pregnant. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah. You were back to work in a couple of weeks. I was. What were you thinking? Um, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that when you own a business, you really have very little control over uh, your schedule. Yeah. Uh, you don't ever go into business to have time off or to <laughs> say what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um I kind of had to. I didn't go back to work on the line um, cooking right away, but I did have to do office stuff. 
it also happened to be I had um, two of my employees. One of them is a, a, a woman. She got pregnant a month behind me. Mm. Um, so her, her daughter's about to turn one, Aww. two months behind me. And yeah. then my other cook, he got his girlfriend pregnant at the same, and they're a day apart. Oh my goodness. So we had three babies at the lodge back to back to back. Uh, I, I, it was just one of those things I had taken very good care of my body. Mm-hmm. I was healing well. People were taking good care of me while I was caring for him. Um, and so it, it's amazing what you can do when you have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so nobody really wanted me to come back to work that soon. And I, didn't do the super physical things right away, mm-hmm. um, but wasn't the six weeks that the doctor said <laughs> I should have waited by any Hopefully means. Hopefully your doctor isn't oh, listening. You know, he, he was aware, and this was something that they, they, my husband told them that he wanted me to slow down towards mm-hmm. the end of my pregnancy, and so they were very aware that yeah. it was going to be a difficult time for me. Do you find that you might have been the one, because I had a maternity leave, so I was off for three months Um, You know, some moms and women, they don't want to go back to work and they enjoy being at home. Others, for me, I enjoyed being at home, but Mm -hmm. I was also ready to kind of get back into my work and being around adults um, where you kind of went into it. Did you do you think you would have found yourself that way? You couldn't just be sedentary for a while. Uh, It it was it was a blend for me for Mm -hmm. those first two weeks when we brought Bo home. I didn't leave my house. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave my house. I wanted to be in my cave with my baby and I didn't want to leave. People came to me. Rarely, my husband went and got us food from the lodge. I, I didn't want to leave, but as a business owner who is is involved, and um, I, you know, I run my kitchen. I'm our yeah. head chef, and so I had a lot of guilt over not being there. Um, I, you know, when yeah. we run the show, you got to <laughs> yeah. do it, and yeah. I just, I felt guilty. I felt like I was letting my team down, even mm-hmm. though I just had a baby. Right. Um, I think now, now that I think back at it, I'm a year out. That was my first mom guilt kicking in. Mm, and oh, I did, mom guilt. I didn't know. <laughs> Don't and, get you me know, started. <laughs> mom guilt will rear her head at any chance she has. Yes. For sure. So I, I wanted to go back because I love what I do. I missed my people, but it was it was very hard. Well, it, it kind of leads us into our, you know, my next question and topic, just being a working mom in general, whether you're running a lodge, being a chef, doing what I do, or even stay at home. That's a full-time working job. Yes. Yep. What do you say to women out there who kind of want to get into that, maybe they can't, or, or just coming into having their baby and trying to kind of navigate that whole... No matter what you're going to do, it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. Whether you're staying at home, it's hard. Whether you're at work, it's hard. If you're doing both, it's hard. Yeah. And I think that everybody needs to give themselves and everybody needs to give other people more grace. I had a hard... I, I still have a hard time mm-hmm. because I know that a lot of these milestones, because Bo's my first, mm-hmm. that I assumed I wouldn't be there for because I work a lot. And I was there for his first steps, which was a big surprise, but a blessing. And so I, women can do anything they want to do. Um, I have a very opposite gender roles in my relationship. My husband's a retired veteran. And Mm so we're lucky that we have two incomes, but he gets to stay home and raise Mm -hmm. our children. And I'm the one who works. And he knew that when we met, you know, it takes a lot to run a business. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that no matter what, just Give yourself some grace. If you want to go back to work, that doesn't make you a bad mom. That means that you want to hustle, you want to do things. Being a mom actually made me take care of myself better because Mm. I needed a stronger foundation to be able to take care of my kids and my business because my plate already ran over. Then you had a baby. <laughs> yes. You really got to get a bigger plate. You yeah. Know, you don't, you, you can't have them when Dixie's out there just mm-hmm. folding under the, you, you got to get a bigger, stronger plate. And that starts with taking care of yourself. In addition to that, what else have you learned about yourself since becoming a mom? <sighs> <laughs> um, I have learned that I actually want a bigger family than I originally thought. Mm-hmm. I, I love my child. I did not, it was kind of always up in the air whether I was going to have kids. It Mm -hmm. really kind of depended on the relationship I was in at the time. I've been in relationships where we would have been happy not having children. Mm -hmm. My mom was very honest with us that if it's not your burning desire to have children, it's going to test you and it's going to be hard enough that you're going to have an even harder time. Mm -hmm. But I met my husband and I'm like, oh, this guy, I want to have a, I want to have a family (laughs) with him. Yeah. So that's, that I didn't expect. I didn't expect to want the we're not going to have six kids, okay? <laughs> he wants a dozen, but, oh, you know, boy. I don't want that. I told okay. him that we, you know, we're actually, we're trying for another. Okay. Um, but I'm already 34. Mm-hmm. That's by no means old. Mm-hmm. But seeing what I came from and having, you know, I know people that were grandmas by the time they were my age. Yeah. And I'm so happy for them because they get to have their grandchildren around forever. Yeah. 
but I don't, I don't want to be having kids when I'm 40. I'd like to have some time on the mm-hmm. other side with just my husband because right. I, I love him. I yeah. would like to have some time when it's about us again. Yeah. No, I, the longer you have kids, the less you get that. <laughs> yeah. No, I was 33 actually when I had my daughter. Yeah. So I, nothing wrong with having him early, but Absolutely I couldn't not. imagine. I was still trying to figure out life. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> applaud 20s. people that do it when they're younger because. And two and three kids at that. Oh my gosh. It's, it's amazing. It's like you were figuring yourself out at the same time that you were mm-hmm. keeping these humans alive. Bravo to you. You deserve all the medals in the world. Yes. Hard. No, no ma- It's hard when you get older because you know, you're changing your trajectory of your life. And people are kind of looking on. like, oh, you know, TikTok. TikTok. And yeah. it's like, well, there's women in their 40s having children. You right. know, it's just a preference and there's no it is right or wrong. It's some of those stigmas. Absolutely. Stigmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother episode. Yes. It could oh, be the, trust the stigmas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of, I mean, talk a little bit to that. Um, you know, I went through PPD after I had my mm. daughter. That was something that, you know, it's it was a stigma kind of back in the day and until... I went through it and experienced that. I came back and was like, oh my goodness. And I just, when you, it's just something like when you become a mom, you just can relate to any mom. Yes. And when you had emailed and we were talking a little bit, you were saying, you know, to having these hard conversations and being vulnerable. Absolutely. Being a parent is awesome and it's great, but it's also very hard and it'll test you. It will. And it'll, (laughs) it'll really break you down to show you who you Mm -hmm. are. Um, and a lot of times you see who you are in the habits your children pick up yeah. that you didn't know that they were picking up. You're like, oh, they got that from me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very worried about postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. I have a history of depression, and I know that I, I spoke to my doctors about it. Yeah. Um, I can be pretty emotional. I had been on um, two, I had been on Mirena, mm-hmm. so I had had hormonal birth control. And then when I came off of that, it's like you meet yourself for the first time, yeah. right? <laughs> and then being pregnant and all of those. Um, emo- it's just, it's a roller coaster. Isn't it wild? I was so worried about postpartum depression that I never saw the anxiety coming. Mm. I didn't hit with the depression. I got that postpartum got- anxiety. Oh, okay. Whew, let me tell you, the things that you think about with your child and follow through and then have the visuals, mm-hmm. um, I still... I scarred myself <laughs> with the things like, I, I mean, we live an hour away from the hospital yeah. and even just that drive home, I'm like, somebody could hit us. I mean, just mm-hmm. all the mom things that go through your yeah. head. I wasn't prepared for that level of anxiety. Then you heap on the anxiety of, oh, I'm not at work. I'm not doing the things. I'm mm-hmm. like, it was crushing for a while. Um, having a support system, having that conversation started early and um, having a partner that I can trust and that you know, has seen all of the ugly things, Yes. you know, I mean, he watched my C-section. He's yeah. like, Oh, I can see your spleen. I'm like, get <laughs> back here. You know, there's nothing that this man would, yeah. would shy away from. Yeah. And I'm fortunate that I picked mm-hmm. a partner like that, but it's one of the reasons I wanted to have kids with him because you have no idea what's going to come after birth. Yeah. You just have to deal with it. I, there's, you know, there's all the advice in the world and they say, you know, there, I wish there was, I wish there was a parenting book but there's Mm. not there's no rule book for it and Mm -mm. you know a lot of people are trying to give parents advice or new moms and it's like work do what's best for your family and that's going to look different for everybody it will and I just I feel like in with the TikTok society Mm -hmm. and the social media society you see all the shiny things or you see like oh don't do this you're going to hurt your child I mean yeah even like a lot it it is so much and you can find anything that'll make you feel judged Mm mm-hmm Anywhere. I mean, I think being a mother and raising children is one of the most judged things that there is. And we're not taught anymore to rely on our instincts. And we have them. Mm-hmm. We, we have them. Yeah. And you're supposed to trust the people on the Internet more than what's bred into you. And I, I don't subscribe to that. I, yeah. I don't. Like, I know what's best for my child. Mm-hmm. I will ask my people if I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm a communicator. Yeah. <laughs> to a fault. <laughs> my poor husband. And, you know, and uh, my business, we're 80% women. Oh, okay. I have two awesome. men that work for me. The oh. rest are all women. Yeah. And so it's a, a giant think tank, if you will. <laughs> Quite I love a bit. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I have I have a, a wonderful support system that if I'm mm-hmm. having an issue or I need something to talk about, they're not going to be just an echo chamber. They're not going to tell me what I want to hear. Mm-hmm. They're going to tell me what I need to hear or give me perceptions, but then they're going to trust what I do and what we do as right. parents. Right. Yeah. It's not being judgy, just being no. open to it yep. and saying, hey, I can pivot here. And the thing is, is because you tried something and it didn't work out or you, yeah. that doesn't mean you have to do that forever. You can always shift and go here. And, yeah. And be fluid with it. Right. Really. And that's and fluidity in parenthood isn't talked about a lot. I mm-hmm. mean, it's just like, well, you need to decide what you're going to do and how your plan is and how you're going to be that's regimented. It. And that's it. And you really can't even parent 
two children in the same family the same. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an older brother. We're only 17 months apart, and we are as opposite of people, and we came from the exact same gene pool. Yes. And there's no way that my mother could have parented me at the same time, you know? Um, I spoke about our friends that had a a baby a month after me. Mm -hmm. Well, they also have a seven-year-old boy. They're they're not the same parents that Mm -hmm. they were when they had their son that they are now that they have their daughter. And you just... I don't think that's talked about a lot either. You just, you, you have to be able to adjust and move to the ball mm-hmm. when it comes to parenting because you're not going to see what's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not. And when you have that plan, that's when things go left. I mean. Yep. When you're like trying to push them on that path and it's not. And, yeah. you know, being able to take a, a step back as a parent. And, you know, I'm a big, um, you know, person too with apologizing to your kids or, Absolutely. you know, accepting your fault and going, okay, you know, mommy was a little bit irritated. I didn't mean to take that on in you. I'm sorry. Absolutely. And that goes a long way. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, you can't parent them all the same. Mm-mm. Kids are changing. Yeah. My yeah. daughter is very different from when she was at seven, six, five, mm-hmm. you know, so to keep on that path, you just got to kind of, you again, fluidity. You do. Such and, a key thing. And when you get older, like I've been having <laughs> over the last couple of years, these mind blowing moments where I realize, you know, memories from my childhood. Mm-hmm. And then I think about how old my mom was at that time. Right. When I found out that my mom was in her 20s and moved to Alaska, which she was born and raised in Vancouver, Washington, told her husband, my stepdad, that she was never going to leave. And then she moved here in April. Wow. He moved here for work. And she was like, what did we do? (laughs) And she was like 27 with two kids, like six and five. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. Yeah. And they just do it with such ease. And you're like, how did this happen? But also that was, you know, they didn't have the... The social media and they the influences, it. which, you know, I like to think that that plays a part, too, in just kind of oh. parents nowadays. Absolutely. I feel like I'm really in the last generation. Like, the internet and mm-hmm. smartphones came out when I was in high school, yeah. but my childhood didn't involve that. Right. You know, I remember going down to Centennial um, Campground in Soldatna mm-hmm. and walking to the payphone to call my stepdad every night. Yeah. You know, that I, I wish that our children were, and that, I think that's another thing, is we want our children to have the same um, upbringing that we had, mm-hmm. they don't live in the same world. They don't, yeah. And fighting that isn't going to do very good things. You have to go with it and you have to make it work for what's right for you. We don't want our children to have cell phones until they're well into the teenage mm-hmm. years. I mean, they're always going to have ways to get a hold of people if they need it. They're always going to be with us, right. you know? So there's really never going to be a time that they need one. That's just giving them access to things that is not they're not ready for and it's going to give other people access to them and that's not okay well i feel like too where you're located willow they're kind of getting the best of both worlds like while you do have access i'm sure to like internet and things like that they can see tablets you also can be remote and you're out there and get them you know doing what you guys do and seeing you in the kitchen and things like that yeah putting them to work (laughs) yeah that's the thing they they see me work very hard Mm -hmm. and you know and when i tell my stepson that i've had a job since i was 14 and um just worked on i i want them to see that and but at the same time we're i don't ever say we're lucky because that doesn't put in the hard work that we have put in for 10 years and ground out but we're very fortunate like we live on 13 acres that butt up to the 26 acres of my business. Wow. Our boys are going to be able to run rampant through the mm-hmm. forest and learn all the skills that we want them to. And right now, my stepson is really interested in um, survival skills and learning all the skills. Oh, like, neat. perfect. Go outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go outside. Remember that for... little, we used to go outside and play and come oh, back. You yeah, know, yeah. Parents had to remember to call us in and yeah, have the, dinner. But... The street lights come on. It's yes. time to come home, right? And I do get joy. Like, my daughter, and I will say my daughter, she does love to go play outside. Like, she don't get me wrong. She loves her tablet and the Roblox and things like yeah. that. But in a heartbeat, if she hears kids outside, she'll stop and want to go play with them. And it's yes. just, it's a cool thing. It is. Um, you know, to see the kids running around and. Um, yeah. And, and still like, we want to instill that part in them that Mm -hmm. we had, but we have to understand that they live in a different world and we're the ones that have to adjust. We can't make our children be the ones that always adjust. It has to be us. Yeah. We're the adults. We have our frontal lobe. They don't yet. (laughs) You know, that's on us. Little humans that we were raising. Yes. Yes. Um, well, yeah, I'll give you the final thought. Anything that you would like to say, mention or add on that I didn't ask, or you'd like to, to just share in general. My biggest thing is parenting is that we need to give ourselves grace Mm -hmm. and we need to give other people grace. And, um, and it's not just about moms. Dads need it too. They are parents. And in our generation, men are stepping up to the plate more than they ever have. And so if there's a stay at home dad, we need to give him as much respect and support as a stay at home mom and not just expect them to be able to handle it. Right. I think that's important. And 
really just trusting your own instincts and doing what you can because your best is all you have. <laughs> and, and it's just, I mean, I have to tell myself these things yes. every single day. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. Totally agree. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. It was wonderful to talk to you. Uh, and thank you all for listening to another episode of Parenting in the Far North. And don't forget to like and subscribe.